know if these things are working right now. I'm trying to find uh, the jungle crew. I'm in the jungle. All the sounds and the smells and the sights of the jungle. I can't find my jungle. Hi, you are. Welcome back, crew of the jungle. Jungle crew. Pardon the noise. I will speak up so you can hear me over the noise. The noise will pass and I'll still be here. I don't go far because I'm a man of the jungle. Since they fear me alone, they have good reason, said Ka. The snake, chattering foolish, vain, vain, foolish, and chattering are the monkeys. But a man thing in their hands is no good luck. They grow tired of the nuts. They pick and throw them down. They carry a bunch of half, a branch half a day, meaning to do great things with it. And then they snap it into two pieces. That man thing is not to be envied. They called me also yellow fish, was it not? Worm, worm, earthworm, said Bengara, as well as other things which I can for shame. We must remind them to speak well of their master, Asp. We must help their wandering memories now, whither went they with the cub. The jungle alone knows toward the sunset, I believe, said Baloo. We had thought that thou wouldst go, Ka. I how? I take them when they come in my way. But I do not hunt the banzer log frogs or the green scum. on a water hole for that matter. Up, 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 up. Halo, 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 halo. Look up, Blue of Sinewee Wolf Pack. Blue looked up. You see where the voice came from. And there was Chill, the kite, swooping down with the sun, shining on the upturned flangs of his wings. It was near Chill's bedtime, but he had ranged, uh, yeah, ranged all over the jungle looking for the bear and had missed him in the thick foliage. What is it? said Baloo. I have seen Mowgli among Bandar Log, says the bat. He bade me tell you I watched the Bandar Log have taken him beyond the river to the monkey city, blah, to the cold lairs. They may stay there for a night, or ten nights, or an hour. I have told the bats, blah, blah, to watch through the dark time. That is my message, good hunting to all you blow, blah. Full gorge and deep, and a deep sleep you cry, chill said Bengara. I will remember thee in my next kill and put aside the head for thee alone, O oh, best of kites. It is nothing, it is nothing, it is nothing. Uh, the boy held the master word and I could have done no less, said Joe, circled and circled up again to his roost. He has not forgotten us to use his tongue, said Baloo, with a chuckle of pride. <laughs> to think of one so young remembering the master word for the birds, too, Will. He was being pulled across the trees. <laughs> it was so, it was so... It was firmly driven into me, said Ben Gera. But I am, I am proud of him. 
And now we must go to the cold lairs. They all knew where that place was, but few of the jungle people ever went there because that, what they called the cold lairs, was an old desert, deserted city, lost and buried in the jungle and beasts seldom used, a place that men have once used, the wild boar will, but the hunting tribes do not. Besides, the monkeys, those gray monkeys, lived there as much as they could be said to live anywhere, and no self-respecting animal would come within eyeshot of it, except in times of drought. And the half-ruined tanks and reservoirs held little water. It is half a night's journey. Bengera and Blue looked very serious. I will go as fast as I can, he said anxiously. We dare not wait for thee, follow Blue. We must go on foot, quick, Ka, uh, qu uh, quick foot, Ka and I. Feet or no feet, I can keep abreast. All of all thy four, said Ka shortly. Baloo made one effort to hurry, but had to sit down panting, and so they left him to come on later, while Bangara hurried forward at the quick panther canter. Ooh, we like the rhymey. Ka said nothing, but strive as Bangara might. The huge rock python held level with him when they came to the hill stream. Bangara gained, because he bounded across while Ka swam, his head and his two feet, uh, and the two feet of his neck clearing the water, but on gra level ground, Ka made up the distance. By the broken locks that freed me, said Bangara, when, uh, when Twilight had fallen, thou art so slow, there, there art no slow goer. I am hungry. Said Ka. Besides, they call me Speckle Frog. Worm, earthworm, and yellow to boot. All one. Let us go now. Go on, said Ka, seeming to pour himself along the ground, finding the shortest road with his steady eyes and keeping to it. In the cold lairs, the monkey people were not thinking of Mowgli's friends at all. They had brought, they had brought, Linda. They had not thought, thought of the monkey's people at all. They, I was my, my I was hiding or uh, had my sister's air buds and they're in my pocket. Okay. In the cold layers, the monkey people were not thinking of Mowgli's friends at all. They had brought the boy to the, uh, to the lost city and were very much pleased with himself for the time. Mowgli had never seen an Indian city before. And though this was almost a heap of ruins, it seemed very wonderful and splendid. Some kings had built it long ago on a little hill. You can still trace the stone causeways that led up to the ruined gates where the last splinters of wood hung to the worn, rusted hinges. Trees had grown into and out of the walls. The battlements were tumbled down and decayed, and wild creepers hung out of the windows of the towers on the walls in bushy, hanging clumps. The great rooftop, the great roofless palace crowned the hill. And the marble of the courtyards and the fountains was split and stained with red and green. And great cobblestones in the courtyard where the king's elephants used to live had been thrust up and apart by grasses of, and young trees. From the palace you could see the rows and rows of roofless houses that made up the city looking like empty honeycombs filled with blackness. The shapeless block of stone that had been an idol in the square where, where four roads met. The pits and the, and the dimples at the street corners where the public wells once stood. 
and the shattered domes of temples with wild figs sprouting on their sides. The monkeys called the place their city and pretended to despise the jungle people because they lived in the forest. And yet they never knew what the buildings were made, of, made for nor how to use them. They would sit in circles in the hall of the king's council chamber and scratch for fleas and, pre and pretend to be men. Or they would run in and out of roofless houses uh, and collect pieces of plaster and old bricks in the corner and forget where they had hidden them and fight and cry and scuffle. Uh, cry and scuffling crowds and then break off to play up and down the terraces of the king's garden. Where they, had, there where they would shake the rose tree and the oranges in sport to see the fruit and the flowers fall. They explored all the passages and dark tunnels in the palace and the hundreds of little dark rooms, but they never remembered what they had seen and what they had not, and so drifted about in ones and twos or crowds, telling each other that they were doing as men did. They drank at the tanks and, uh, and made the water all muddy. And then they fought over it, and then they would all rush together in mobs and shout, there's no one in the jungle so wise and good and clever and strong and gentle as the Bendelaw. Then all would begin again till they grew tired of the city and went back to the treetops hoping the jungle people would notice them. Mowgli, who had been trained under the law of the jungle, did not like or understand this kind of life. The monkeys dragged him into the cold layers late in the afternoon. And in, instead of going to sleep, as Mowgli would have done after a long journey, they joined hands and danced about and sang their foolish songs. One of the monkeys made a speech and told his companions that Mowgli's capture marked a new thing in the history of the Bandar Log. For Mowgli was also was, was going to show them how to weave sticks and canes together as a protection against the rain and the cold. Mowgli picked up some creepers and began to work them in and out, and the monkeys tried to imitate. But, I, but in very few minutes, they lost interest and began to pull their friends' tails or jump up and down on all fours, coughing. I wish to eat, said Mowgli. I am a stranger in this part of the jungle. Bring me food or at least leave me leave me to hunt here. Twenty or thirty monkeys bounded away to bring him nuts and wild pawpaws, but they fell to fighting on the road, and it was too much trouble to go back with what was left of the fruit. Mowgli was sore and angry as well as hungry, and he roamed through the empty city giving being the stranger's hunting call from time to time, but no one answered him, and Mowgli felt that he had reached a very bad place indeed. All that Baloo had said about the Bandar Log is true. He thought, he thought to himself, they had no law, no hunting call, no leaders, nothing but foolish words, and little picking thievish hands, so if I am starved or killed here, it will be my own fault, but I must try to return to my own jungle. Baloo will surely beat me, but that is better than chasing silly rose leaves with the Bender Law. We shall see if our boy Mowgli can get back to his friends. Hope you're having a good day, friends, and have a great weekend. I'll be here in the jungle. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'll do a reading. Look for a reading tomorrow and Sunday.